Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel, this edition's top stories. Phase 1 of the Viewfort Water Supply Redevelopment Project officially launched. CARICOM commits to reducing its U.S. $5 billion food import bill by 25% in the next five years. And St. Lucia remembers St. Lucian singer and cultural icon Dame Marie Salifa Descartes. Phase 1 of the Viewfort Water Supply Redevelopment Project was officially launched and joins the list of several water supply improvement projects currently ongoing island-wide. The Viewfort Water Supply System has been in dire need of expansion and upgrades to meet the existing and projected demand and will benefit commercial and institutional enterprises and a population of an estimated 20,000 individuals. Anisia Antoine begins our broadcast. The government of St. Lucia recently held a sword turning ceremony to mark the official commencement of Phase 1 of the Viewfort Water Supply Redevelopment Project. The Viewfort Water Supply System, for many years now, has been in need of urgent expansion and upgrades so as to adequately meet the current demand from residents of Viewfort, Labry and Environs, as well as future demands. The scope of work includes the construction of water production facilities, installation of new HDPE transmission mains, and three new storage reservoirs, among other interventions. Commercial and institutional enterprises, together with an estimated population of 20,000 people, are expected to benefit from the water supply. Francis Denbo is the chairman of Wasco's board of directors. Water supply in the South has been unreliable and inconsistent in both the dry and rainy season due to the inadequacy of the existing system. During periods of intense rainfall, the turbidity of the raw water rises significantly above an acceptable level. During the dry season and on account of climate change, the quantity of water available from the existing intake decreases significantly. This often leads to extended periods of water shortages in the area. These water supply constraints in the area have curtailed tourism and other industrial development plans in the south. In fact, during this drought, the Viewfort River literally dried up on, in various sections. The Viewfort water supply system is therefore in need of an urgent upgrade to meet existing and projected demand and to protect public health. Phase one of this project is scheduled to be completed in September 2021, with phase two to be completed in March of 2022. Phase one costs some 14.1 million US dollars, and phase two will be installed at a cost of 6.9 million US dollars. The government of St. Lucia and the water and sewage company Wasco have contributed 4.2 million US dollars. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, reaffirmed the government's commitment to bolstering Wasco's capacity to deliver a clean and reliable water supply. The minister expressing gratitude to stakeholders involved in the project called on residents to exercise patience as the works may bring inconveniences and delays. We believe in the people. We believe that water is life. We believe that as a government, we need to develop and implement projects that impact the people. And that is what we are doing here today. So, based on the discussion with the Honorable Prime Minister, he said, look, Mr. Minister, we are going to look for the resources because we need to finish the project in its entirety. There's no need to make this project, what you call, in a, in a halfway we need to do the entire project, and he has given a commitment to get the additional $6 million, what we call a phase two, so we can finish this project for everyone in Viewfort to benefit. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, stated that improvements in the water supply system are eminent as this vital utility must be reliable and able to support the growth and development of the South. The Prime Minister expressed gratitude to the Line Minister and the Chairman of Wasco's Board of Directors for their efforts in developing the water systems in St. Lucia. What Ezekiel Joseph as the Minister and Mr. Dembo have achieved in the last four years is remarkable, really. Applause 
the dam that money was being collected, but no work was being done. Denry, Miku, Soufrere, and now Viewfort. All these places were in dire need of capacity. And they have delivered on their promise. And they have delivered and put capacity in, which now allows the government to expand. And that's really what I wanted to focus on today, is that this water project is critical in developing the capacity of the South. The sword turning ceremony to mark the official commencement of Phase 1 of the Viewfort Water Supply Redevelopment Project took place on Thursday, August 6, 2020, on the grounds of the water treatment plant in Borsejou. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, Honorable Alan Chasney, is currently on leave until August 22, 2020. In the Prime Minister's absence, Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph, serves as Acting Prime Minister. The Caribbean Community CARICOM commits to reducing its U.S. $5 billion food import bill by 25% in the next five years, also known as the 25 in 5 plan. CARICOM explained that the vulnerabilities of CARICOM member states have made it even more evident the need for food security in the region. The 25 in 5 plan, according to CARICOM's Assistant Secretary General, Trade and Economic Integration, Joseph Cox, is not simply a slogan but an imperative that must be addressed within the context of food security in the region. The Assistant Secretary General explained that food insecurity is currently being fueled by a high food import bill, high incidence of non-communicable diseases and the adverse consequences of climate change and extreme weather. The Caribbean Community Agriculture Policy CAP underpins the 25 in 5. Cox noted the guiding regional food security policies and instruments for the Caribbean region are mainly the Regional Food and Nutrition Security Policy and Action Plan and the Common Fisheries Policy, which are further supported by the recently approved CARICOM COVID-19 Agri-Food Plan. The main pillars of the action plan are food availability, food access, food utilization, nutritional adequacy, and stability of food supply. 25 in 5 recognizes that with the exception of Belize and Guyana, all other CARICOM countries are net food importers, with at least seven of these countries importing more than 80% of the food they consume, resulting in, a regions, in the region's annual food import bill being estimated at $5 billion in 2019. From a food security and nutritional adequacy standpoint, the region, which is highly dependent on food imports through wheat, fresh produce, dairy, meats, etc., needs to ensure that the supply chain for key products continues uninterrupted, even while continuing to seek opportunities for import substitution. CARICOM countries must have plans in place to safeguard against these realities ever becoming a serious challenge or threat to our food security. CARICOM's strategies to achieve the reduction in the food import bill must be grounded in a multi-organizational framework. This, Cox explained, should be reinforced by multilateral support, particularly in the areas of policy intervention, institutional strengthening, investment and sector financing. He explained that over the years, CARICOM member states continue to record encouraging results as they have implemented food and nutrition interventions. The Assistant Secretary General added, however, that the COVID-19 pandemic has made the need for food security even more apparent today. And we are absolutely committed to reducing the region's food import bill by at least 25% over the next five years. In other words, 25 in five. The COVID-19 pandemic has further highlighted the need to ensure affordable access to food. This, in our case, has led to the development of the CARICOM COVID-19 Response Agri-Food Plan. The plan has been specifically designed to treat with effective access and the optimization of production. It further outlines the specific steps which must be taken within the CARICOM region to ensure that the health crisis does not become a food crisis. We have been lucky thus far as the region has not had a shortage of food per se, but a temporary misalignment 
of supply and demand occasioned by supply chain disruptions. The Assistant Secretary General, Trade and Economic Integration, spoke of the 25 in 5 plan while addressing a webinar that was focused on galvanizing multilateral action to prevent the health crisis from becoming a food crisis workshop on the formulation of a regional food and nutrition security policy in the Caribbean, which was held with support from the Food and Agriculture Organization Project, promoting CARICOM CARIFORUM Food Security, Phase 2. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has expressed concern as the island continues to record significant increases in reported cases of dengue. The national epidemiologist is urging members of the public to take all necessary precautions to safeguard themselves and their loved ones, especially as cases peak during the rainy season. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has noted a significant increase in reported cases of dengue in St. Lucia. Dengue is a viral illness spread by the bite of the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which lives in urban habitats and breeds mostly in man-made containers. Dengue is endemic to St. Lucia, which means that there is continued local transmission, which often peaks during and after the rainy season. There are four distinct but closely related serotypes of the virus that cause dengue, that is 1, 2, 3, and 4. National epidemiologist in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Michelle Fassois, indicated that the ministry is very concerned about the increases as both serotypes 2 and 3 have been recorded to date, with quite a few infections in children. The national epidemiologist explained that majority of the reported cases are predominantly in the northern, central and eastern parts of the island. Cases have been reported in a number of areas including Radwe, Mon Road, Castries City, Millet and Rich Four. Cases have also been reported in the south and west of the island, but to a significantly lesser extent. Normally when an individual is infected with one serotype, he or she receives lifelong immunity. However, if an individual is infected with a second type of dengue, a second serotype, he or she um, is likely to face a more severe clinical picture um, on the second infection. And this is why this is particularly concerning to us in St. Lucia that we have two serotypes um, in circulation. The virus, um, dengue viral disease, has an incubation of um, four to ten days after the bite. And by the incubation period, I'm referring to the type between when the individual is infected and starts manifesting signs and symptoms. About three quarters of the infections of dengue virus is asymptomatic, meaning that the person does not have any signs or symptoms, or it produces a very mild infection, which is normally difficult to um, differentiate from other illnesses. The national epidemiologist noted that the symptoms of dengue can be confused with that of the flu and COVID-19. Persons with mild dengue, however, may present with fever, accompanied by a rash, nausea or vomiting, pain behind the eye, muscle and joint pain. In its more severe form, persons may progress to bleeding from the gum or nose, vomiting blood and passing blood in stool. They may also experience severe abdominal pain and or excessive vomiting, which may lead to dehydration. Dr. Faswa indicated that there is no specific treatment for dengue and management is supportive based on clinical presentation. Testing for dengue is available in St. Lucia and the Ministry of Health and Wellness urges persons who may be experiencing signs and symptoms of dengue to seek help at any of the nearest wellness centers. Now, because the vector requires water to breed, um, this is why we notice its peak during the rainy season. When the rains come in, um, the vector tends to breed in any, it's the smallest of receptacles. So what we're asking the general public to do is assist in eliminating the breeding grounds for the vector. And in that way, we can control the spread of dengue in St. Lucia. So we ask persons to do frequent checks around the home, um, ensure that your buckets, your covers, everything is turned over and um, monitor your yard, both inside and outside of your homes to ensure that you do not have breeding. 
Members of the public are advised to avoid the indiscriminate dumping of garbage, which also serves as breeding grounds for the mosquito, and adhere to the scheduled garbage collection days and times. If one has been diagnosed with dengue, the Ministry of Health and Wellness advises that they sleep under a mosquito net to avoid being bitten by the mosquito. The use of insect repellent is also recommended to control the spread of dengue virus. St. Lucia's Queen of Folk and Cultural Icon, De Marie Salifa Descart, better known as Sesen, passed away on August 11, 2010. Sesen left an indelible mark, having lived a life dedicated to contributing richly to the island's cultural landscape. In observance of a decade since her passing, NTN featured famed violinist Augustine Julian, widely known as Charlie, who performed popular renditions of the Litcher 12. Jesse Leos reports on that edition of the Morning Brew. It has been 10 years since St. Lucia's Queen of Folk, Dame Marie Salifa Descartes, passed on, but the memory of her music as a chatoile extraordinaire remains etched in the hearts and minds of cultural enthusiasts and all St. Lucians by extension. A Miku native, Dame Sesen, as she was widely known, began her career at the age of eight years old. Marilyn Hyacinth, member of the Folk Research Center, gave insight into this early beginning. Sesen's father, Sonny, started a Laos group in, in uh, Magwetut, mm -hmm. and um, he wanted a shot well. And he just thought that Sesen had what it took at eight years mm -hmm. to be that shot well. And he informed the mother, his wife, that Sesen will be the shot well. And the mother probably just accepted. And, shot, and um, Sesen came on. She sang and she rocked the crowd. And blew the roof. Into adulthood, Dame Sesen gained popularity in the rural communities for her talent in folk music and dance. But it was only after her songs were recorded that she shot to national fame. Reflecting fondly on Dame Sesen on the anniversary of her passing is leader and violinist of the Mamai Lakai folk group, Augustin Julian, better known as Charlie. 1970 was the year he first met her while on a talent scouting mission with the late Frank Norville. We met with Sesen Descartes and uh, we realized she was a fantastic shot well. And then Frank and I, we went close to her, we visited her and um, she gave us our, her stories and then the way she sang her voice, we captured her voice and then in her recording I was able to put some instrument, a shak shak, when she said, Mama Ladi, why? Mm. I, the shark shark in it, I was the one who introduced the shark shark in it. That was one of my favorite tunes. Mm -hmm. She went to mm -hmm. And it's the way she was expressing it. You know, it gives you a feeling of what she was doing. This lady had a passion in what she was doing. That is why everybody was feel pleased to name her the queen of folk music. Most notable is Dame Sassen's winning performance at the Carifta Expo in 1969. Several accolades followed, including being inducted into the Caribbean Broadcasting Union Music Hall of Fame and designated St. Lucia's Queen of Culture. Dame Sesen was immortalized in a Sir Derek Walcott poem titled Homecoming, in which he wrote, My country, my heart, I am not home till Sesen sings, a voice with wood smoke and ground doves in it. Sesen was ultimately awarded the distinction of Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire for her community service and cultural preservation efforts. The Monsignor Patrick Anthony Folk Research Center, FRC, is commemorating the 10th anniversary of Dame Sesen's passing by highlighting and encouraging the St. Lucian community to reflect on the values she represented and recognize their role in becoming more culturally sensitive and astute citizens. 
In a press release, the FRC stated, quote, Sesson's influence transcends generations and her work is undoubtedly etched in defining the St. Lucian identity. In the context of global and national discourse on the importance of safeguarding one's patrimony, FRC implores St. Lucians to evaluate more deeply the role legends like Dame Sesson play on our journey to reshaping our narrative as a country, end quote. The relationship between the FRC and Dame Sesson was a close one. In 1984, we started our first um, Jeune Creole, and this was held in Monrepo. And it was during this celebration that Sesen was honored as the Queen of Culture and Folk in, in, in Monrepo in 1984. And that also began a lot of, um, how would I put it? I mean, pushing forward promoting of her songs, attraction. of her dances, and, and, and attraction, and so on. We remember Dame Marie Salifa Sesen Descartes on the 10th anniversary of her passing. Singer, dancer, St. Lucia's Queen of Culture, who passed away at the age of 96 on 11th August, 2010. <laughs> For the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Léonce reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle à Guéole. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle a Creole. Monsieur Ta General, Monsieur Madame Department, Kenny Responsibility, Reformation and Gouvernement Celsi, GIS, Act Television National, Pia NTN, Capositu Nouvelle a Creole, Presidente Primus Hutchinson. Autorité des Affaires Touristiques Celsi, Abajid Minister de Sote, ka continue pou chen zye yo aso moun ki ka antwe an peye la, soti hod se peye ya ki ka swev program bubble. Sa se le yvini pou maladi korona. Ite nesese pou tu iti a fey posib pou sa adwese plume maladi korona. A fason pou chen set le si bien poteje hod maladi ya. Program bubble la ka fey posib pou le sitwayen se peye sa la pou vizite set le si san antwe an ba quarantine. Pays Bahamas, et aussi Pays Jamaïque, te en bas program bubble, pa en program la ako, parce ki autorité a tene pou tiwe se pays sa la, comme j'ai expérimenté yon augmentation de maladie corona, eh, particulièrement en Bahamas, di 751 ka, presentement. J'ai wè des affaires la passe en autorité a, Christopher Gustav, ki wè ska sa pou opération ako e bla, di ki yon ka travay ansem epi ministre de santé, Pou fè asewe ki, pa dan pou gom sala ka opowe, tout set li siyen ka yon ba bon potejman de maladi korona. Gustav eksplike ki, yon teni pou tiwe Bahamas an ba pou gom bubble, paski presentman yon ba 14 jou karantin. Yon ajoute ki, autorite ya ka kontune pou mette anjman plas pou aji epi situasyon kom in nesese an kolaborasyon epi minister de sate. Gustav osi ka wemersye katwivin se servis turistik pe ya pou ja dako pou patispe a pogam sa la. Tou le zeto jez ki ka a vizite set isi ni pou proteje abe potiwe prev ki yo sorti a dan yon pe yi ki an ba pogam bob la e ka te ka bite plis ki 21 jou an pe se pe yi sa la. Ma gwe le zeto jez a ba pogam bob la pa ka yini pou an twe an quarantine i fo yo kat mem Pou se te prev ki yo touve testi, ek pa da yo an pe ya, yo si te ni pou touve l'examine. Yo si ni pou 
outre qui Tesla negatif et qui fait 7 jours avant yo te voyage. Si yo te voyage sa la, si yo te suivre tout wèg et ou pren test si yo sa vini nécessaire. Magwe yo pa kaye en quarantine ou apo ka moutre ki ka wibla se dezyem pli popele kliyan ou chen vakans a set le si. Kote la fami, jan biznis ek lot ka toujou vizite. Alor, yo te nécessaire pou kite ba e peyi la ouve ou facilite se vizitasyon sa la. Se peyi ya ki an ba pogwam bobl se a tig ek babyoda, aruba, anguila, babad, babyoda, bonè, se bivi a e la, se peyi lil de viaj angli, Curso, Dominique, La Grenade, Guiana, Montserrat, Saint Bartholomew, se Kitsek Nevis, se Martin, se Vincent ek La Grenade, Trinidad ek Tobago, ek Turks and Caicos. Le mam publik set le si ka kontinye trouve apel pou pa si men ek jete zor di ne pot kote vay ti vay. Di woyon diskisyon aso NTN. Wè set man, ofisye hot departman le vyon man sa te publik ki wè skosa pou kotwol ti zanimo ki ka pote mouve maladi. Fè yon apel pou publik la pet la betid pou ka jete zor di ek me kite zon di sambli pou ajadwe wat ek men gwen. Charlotte Charles, qui était en discussion et puis bureau et formation en ministère de santé, qui a ce membre public là, à ce membre public cette fois-ci, pour de bout de vieux l'habitude là, pour qu'à quitter les ordres d'assemblée, bon caï, bon chemin, qu'à quitter les drums exposés pour mes gouins, pour prendre les yeux, pendant la famille, ou à ce qu'à multiplier en cause des ordres de salaire. Si nous avons dit que nous avons une fois par semaine, juste marcher au lieu de mon caï. Ve sa woni ki ka sanble glo, ve drum lan, ve se vye baray la woni ou li wankay la, ve boute yon, de le zodi woni pou mette de wopo, se jen zodi a amase, woni pou ve se bay sa, ek toni se bay sa pou glo pa wetyan di den yon, pou glo pa pose, piske le pou glo a pose, sa kay fe may gwen vini ou wankay yon. Sa kay enkouraje wat vini ou an kayon, piske la nan chay zodi, de le manje, kwas manje, pito ou mete yon di nan fridj la ek sanble pou le se jen zodi ya, se moun lan ki kan ma se zodi ya pasi pou hete yon. So nou kan mwede moun pou fè se ti bay sa, dwa so li an kayon, ek nou ka nou vle moun chonje bon santé, se an bay ou sa fe pou kou, ek ou pa brizen pies, jen mini santi, vino ou an kay ou pou di ou sa pou ni pou fe. Pwi petrol pou mwa sa la jani yon chajman. Pwi an detay pou gazoli nizl ek pa galon, LPG 20-22 ek yon san liv jan chaje. Me pwi an detay pou dizl ek kaozin weste menm pwi pa lit. Si pwi sa la ka vini a opwasyon lendi li 10, yo vini a opwasyon depi lendi li 10 a ou. Pwi gazolin ho si soti 2 dola ek dechlen 7 gode sou, pou 2 dola dechlen 9 gode sou pa lit, ebe 11 dola ek 3 chlen 11 gode sou, pou 12 dola ek 6 gode sou pa galon. Pwi kaozin weste menm pwi, la se 1 dola ek dechlen 4 gode sou pa lit, ebe 7 dola ek 7 gode sou pa galon. Dizel weste menm mousi, a 10 dola ek yon chlen 5 go desou pa lit, me yon se soti 10 dola ek de chlen 10 go, ou 10 dola ek de chlen 10 go desou pa galon. Si l'an de 20 liv la, yon se soti 27 dola ek yon chlen 5 go desou pa, ou 27 dola ek de chlen 11 go. Si l'an de 20 liv la, yon se, ou 3 dola ek 4 go desou, ou 3 dola ek yon chle 11 goudè sou pa silenda. Silenda yon san liv ho se soti yon san 59 dola ek yon chle 6 goudè sou ou yon san 62 dola ek 3 chle 5 go pa silenda. Yon ka informe pibik la ki lot enonsman asou pri petrol ka y fet lindi di 31 an mwad a ou 2020. Ek se kosa nou atwa bout nouvel la mese medam, mwen ka mese ou otan pou ka gade mwen ka bawe invitasyon Ou jene pi mwen kon si diye kon se ve la vi nan ay pwese to lot nouvel a kweyol. A pwese, mwen ka vye pwese to jenel. Mersi apel, Primus.
And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.